Last time we visited the aeroplane manufactory, we gave you a how it's made factory tour showing the materials and sub-assemblies of the Chinook aircraft. This week, we're back at the factory to show you a completed aircraft and all the dirty details. Back here in Sealy, Texas, also the location of the Gloucester Aerodrome, which John and Kim both personally designed and developed themselves into an amazingly nostalgic airport. They host a rather popular flying event here once a year for fellow aviators. All right, if you could explain kind of how the Chinook came to be over the years and how you guys acquired it and have grown it to what it is today. Right, well, the, the Chinook has been around for almost 40 years. It started as an ultralight under the ultralight rules or microlight rules of Canada and was designed by an aeronautical engineer who built it, I think it was at Birdman? Yeah. Birdman. Birdman Chinook. Uh, and then <clears throat> over the years, uh, as, as this business goes, uh, it failed and it was bought by a family in Canada who took the design and redesigned much of it to be more uh, less like an ultralight aircraft and more like a light sport aircraft. And that airplane is called the Chinook Plus Two. And what we did was in 2013, we bought the factory lock, stock and barrel, both for the Chinook line and Beaver lines of light sport aircraft under US rules. And we looked at the airplane very carefully. We started building Chinook Plus Twos. And as we became more and more familiar with the airplane, we realized how much optionality and, and uh, Cap cap capability the airplane could be made if we just made a few significant changes to it. So the first thing to do was to get into an agreement with Dan Reynolds and use his design to make the airplane look like a Cub. And uh, although we don't have exactly what Dan Reynolds does, we have something very similar to it and works for the majority of people who buy this aircraft. We also changed the tail wheel. That was the first thing we did as well. First thing we did was change the, the ridiculous tail wheel that uh, the old Chinook Plus 2s used to have. And now we use uh, a Matco tail wheel and a completely different tail wheel uh, structure. And uh, it's been very, very, uh, well received. Then um, after a while of building what we called the Chinook DR at that time and in honor of Dan Reynolds, who we highly respect, we uh, decided to uh, take another look at the Chinook DR and see if we could fix some of the what we perceived as problems in the U.S. market. And that is uh, the U.S. market have larger people that weigh more and we wanted an airplane that's more like uh, a cub, or more like a, uh, um, um, a champ. So the Chinook SJ can has a 700-pound uh, useful load. But one of the key things we did with the design is we increased the cabin width from the Chinook Plus 2 to 38 inches wide at this point, and kept that width through most of the rear cabin before it ta tapers down to the 4-inch tube. This gives a much larger rear cabin. So in doing that, we needed to create a much larger rear door so we can use it for uh, cargo, use it for uh, 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 passengers of any size. So it's much, much more uh, useful. So you, really, so you also have a full harness system now? On we have a full harness system. We have a crow, crow harness system, as you can see here. Uh, both cabins have shoulder harness, and, uh, and it, we, we love them to death. All right, John, so walk us through what is the construction materials, raw materials used to build the Chinook? So everything is aircraft-grade aluminum. Uh, the tube is one-inch tube by 049 wall thickness. Uh, we've increased the size of the gussets. That's 032 material as well. And then 
the structural components of the airplane are, are much stronger. So the inside down tube here is 4130 steel plugged with Delrin from end to end. And it makes for uh, uh, the butterfly cabane that's in the right here is the structural, the, the structural member of the aircraft. So it takes the majority of the load. This, uh, this is simply very much like a cub in that it's just bungee. And it actually is Super Cup bungee that we're using. But instead of using two or three, we use just one for the Chinook because of its weight. This aircraft, uh, when it's put together, is uh, not even quite 600 pounds empty. And this has a 912 UO 80 horsepower installation, upright installation, uh, with a GSC prop. And uh, the three-bladed prop has been very effective for us. I, being an old pilot, I prefer wood propellers because they do not create any vibration issues on the engine. And so this... So you're saying the wooden propeller acts kind of like a, a uh, damper or a damp fluid damper? Kind of a damper. Yeah. This is the E-Drive and uh, we have found it to be the most effective for this airplane. So another thing we did with the Chinook SJ is we increased the, si increased the size of the vertical stabilizer. We've increased the size of the horizontal stabilizers and materially increased the size of the rudder and the elevator. The elevator has fixed trim and that's really all you need to, do, need to have because the airplane is trimmed effectively by the weight you have in the rear cabin. So I'm 220 pounds and uh, I typically fly these things with about 50 pounds in the rear seat and the airplane trims out uh, at level flight without even having to touch the controls. Since we're talking a little bit about performance with the engine, let's roll into what is it like to fly and the speeds and so forth that you fly at? Um, <clears throat> I have a, a significant amount of experience of flying and I can absolutely tell you, uh, I have never flown an airplane that gets off the ground faster. This airplane, and this is absolutely no exaggeration, Kim will tell you she's seen the takeoffs, uh, with no flaps and no one in the rear seat except ballast, I'm off the ground in about three seconds. And it's shocking. At first, it's just shocking because you realize all of a sudden you're flying and your, your mental, you're not, your, your mind hasn't caught up to the fact that you're flying so quickly. Another thing is you do not rotate this into a nose high attitude and climb because of the angle of incidence of the root tube to the body tube creates a climb at full power anyway. So you would add uh, uh, nothing to the throttle as you climb out and once you get to your desired altitude, you throttle back to your level flight. That level flight attitude, power setting for your particular build will give you what your cruise speed is for that airplane. Your approach speed on this airplane is going to be 50 miles an hour over the fence. Your landing is really dependent on your skills because of the full length flap rounds we'll go and show you in just a moment. You can get this airplane down extremely. It, it really is hard to go past a couple hundred feet in a landing if you're flying the airplane properly. Uh, your average landing is going to be between 100 and 200 feet, and uh, it and, and this is a this is a normal approach and a normal landing as opposed to some of these stole competitions that land in like five feet and so forth. I'm not talking about stole yeah. stole. We're, we're I'm about, not talking about Dan Reynolds competition airplane. We're talking this about a normal person. This is a normal flight in a Chinook SJ, right? Uh, interior floorboard is all metal. This area down here by the butterfly cabane is fabric. And the rest of this is fabric covering the bottom of the aircraft. And the fabric then uh, picks up again on the side of the fuselage in this area back here. People have said, well, is there any way to have a baggage compartment? We've tried this, and I can't say that I've been pleased with the results. And the reason is, the body tube kind of defines the top of, of what you can do with the fuselage. 
And so, can you make this a baggage area? Yes, you can, but you're not going to get a lot of height out of it, no matter what you do, without creating significant drag. So we kind of gave up with the idea, and we might probably in the future go to uh, a pod that goes in between the, uh, the lift struts near the jury strut. Yeah, these wings are 32 feet long with the wingtip bow. And the main wing panel, which comes in the kit pre-built for you, is 15 feet long and four feet wide. Where the big change is from the old Chinook to the new is the size of the flap rod and the structure of it. Stronger and it's an entire foot in cord, effectively giving you a five feet cord for the wing rather than four and a half feet on the Chinook Plus 2. Another thing we've done is we have tightened up the bottom of the wing. In the old Chinooks, the fabric adhered to in flight, it would suck up against the Pratt truss of the wing. Here what we've done is put fabric support braces that are three inches wide. And I think there are nine of them across the bottom of the wing. And what it does is it provides a basis for the fabric and then what we do is we glue it on, the fabric is glued on, we cover it with a three inch tape all the way down. Then we put rivets in every, and these are 80, 64 inches. We're putting rivets in every four inches down. And then we cover that with cloth tape and then it's painted. All right, John, tell us about the tanks, the uh, wing tanks options. Right, so having a, uh, uh, a more useful, uh, bush plane, which is what we've built, um, we needed range. So we designed and built our own in-wing tank kit. So this comes with the SJ as part of, a, of the package. You can also get this for a, a DR kit as well. And this tank uh, has three ports. These, these two ports are your, your uh, tank indicator. And so you have a forward port and a rear port that goes down uh, into the fuselage. And I can show you later how that uh, comes together in a set of valves that then go to the engine. Uh, you could have a header tank if you wanted to. We, and I can show you one here in this assembly building, but uh, a lot of people don't. So this tank uh, has become really popular and people are buying them for other airplanes as well. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com, Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net, The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com, Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com, Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, John, you mentioned uh, one very good option for engine for power is the 912 UL, which is 80 horsepower, but another option that's still very popular is a two-stroke. Talk about what the power rating is on that. Well, the two-stroke version is the Rotax 582 Bluehead aircraft engine. So it has dual ignition, and in the Chinook, it's an inverted installation. So the airplane engine sits upside down, and uh, by the way, it's been doing that for 40 years without any problems. So it's not an issue that the engine, it, it flies just as good upside down as it does right side up. But you can see how tight and effective this installation is. It's coming off of a reinforced root tube that's longer than it is for the other Chinook you were looking at, intended to be able to hold the weight of the engine. And in this particular build, this was built for Alaska, so we put a header tank for the fuel, same tanks we were just discussing, is in this airplane, 
And so the fuel comes into a header tank that then goes into the engine, uh, into an electric fuel pump, and then, of course, we have the engine fuel pump. So we have dual fuel pumps. And that's because there's turbulence in the mountains of Alaska. And so uh, it's always good to have a, a header tank uh, in turbulent conditions. Another thing we've done is we've metalized the, uh, the, the uh, center wrap. Uh, it, it's no innovation of ours. Dan Reynolds did it for himself, and uh, uh, we robbed him of that. And we added the lobes. I don't know that he does that, but uh, we've done this. And, uh, and so that's a standard feature for the SJ is your metalized uh, gap cover. So in the kit, we have a metal plate. It's, it's aluminum that comes up and has a port to, for your nozzle. And this is so you can rest a, a fuel pump handle on the wing without affecting the fabric or affecting the wing itself. So uh, that's been metalized uh, just in that area. The rest of the wing is fabric. So John is going to showcase to us how easy it is for a six foot what man? Six foot seven. Six foot seven man to crawl into one of these. Foot in the tire, leg in, butt in the seat, and you're in. So I think that was about seven seconds. So all, uh, all Chinooks now come with uh, ACS tow brakes and Metco uh, hydraulic brakes. Most uh, builders now are going to glass panels. I'm a old steam gauge guy, but uh, don't ask me what this, uh, these ab maps do. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the options people can do in their build? I mean, it's the sky's the limit, but what is the typical options people put in their instruments? I, I, I think the AV30 is probably the most uh, useful uh, glass you can put in uh, these these Chinooks because it's only a three inch instrument and does everything a flight director does just about. I'm long in the trunk as well as long in the legs and so in redesigning the Chinook into the SJ we made ample clearance for headroom and width for larger people. The airplane has a 700 pound useful load. 700 pounds. Yep. Is that with uh, either 65 or 80 horse options? Either or or engine. Yeah. yeah. So we don't uh, recommend you have anything that allows you to move your seat forward or aft because the rudder pedals already come with extenders. And so you can actually move the rudder pedals back or forward using these brackets and these brackets here that come with the kit. So I'm six foot seven, I'm comfortable, but somebody who's five two can be comfortable as well. Right. So, so you can see how low the cabin extends to. This is all glass. This is all glass. And it's all glass in front of you. And so the visibility of this, of this aircraft is very similar to a sailplane where you're in a glass cockpit and with, with glass all around you. Uh, the visibility is just spectacular. There is no way to explain it. And of course, in a Chinook, you have the ability to see where your tires are and what you're landing on. If you keep the nose vacant and put Lux in there, you can see through your feet onto precisely what you're landing on. All right, so if somebody were to order a kit from you, how would they receive it? What should they expect? And then how would they progress through building the actual kit? So how many boxes are we up to now? Uh, we usually send it out in four boxes. One of them um, contains the, all the DR gear, the tires, and the tailwheel elements. We have a wing crate, which is a wooden box where all the wing items go, the, the wing frame. The, um, the elevator goes in that and also the ailerons uh, because it's longer. Then we also have a fuselage box which has obviously the body tube and most of the tubular parts. And then we have what we call the big box which basically has everything else. It has the seats, the cushions, the, um, the flat pieces, um, 
just all the odds and ends and it's all packed in. Each of these boxes are well labelled and then within the box, uh, certainly the big box, we have smaller boxes, like you'll have one that has that says it's the hardware and it'll have a label on it saying this is your hardware. All the hardware is picked for you and it's all labelled so you know what each bolt is and each um, washer and such like. And so when you get it, it's really important that as you unload it, you maybe have some little containers that you can empty them all out in so that you don't lose them all, the rivets, the washers, the, the nuts and stuff. Um, we pretty much label everything. Uh, obviously, occasionally we might have one part that slips by, but generally speaking, we have a pick list which you receive, which shows every item has been ticked off three times. So it's picked and it's ticked. It's wrapped and it's ticked and it's put in a box and it's ticked. So really you shouldn't have any issue. And I usually try and label and put on that pick list exactly where those items go. I don't know, John, I think she's the real accountant right here. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Somebody, somebody has to keep him in order. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so w when these boxes and boxes and ticks and boxes get checked and it arrives at the customer's house. Yeah, we strongly recommend before you unpack anything that you go through the extensive assembly manual. So uh, the old Chinook had a very good assembly manual and what we did is we adopted that format. And so the way the assembly manual works is it has a step number, like step one. And then it has a box on the page that shows you all the parts required in step one. You go back to the packing, it'll say step one. And so you're unpacking that element of your, of your kit for step one. You're reading the text that you are expected to do in step one and then you turn the page and there is a photograph or a drawing or graphic that shows you what step one should look like. All right, if you can give everybody like a, a ballpark idea or what, what the current pricing is to build one of these. Okay, well we've um, recently unfortunately had to raise some of our prices due to the cost of metal which has skyrocketed. But our um, most current pricing is for the Chinook two-stroke, the DR model is about 27,000 and to that you need to add the propeller cost, the engine, instruments um, and paint. Anything else we have to add? Is that it? That's it. So, so if you think of the, the, the two-stroke is probably about seven, I think the last quoted price we got from our supplier was about 7,000. So you're thinking 27 plus uh, another seven for the engine would be like in the region of maybe 35 to 40 by the depending with shipping what, yeah. depending what instruments you want and um because you can spend a fortune on instruments or you can have real, real basic stuff so so is the f paint is never included in any project right but is, being this no. is a fabric airplane do you include that as part of the kit or is that additional paint is additional no, not, not the paint the fabric the itself fa the fabric oh the fabric is part is of the included. kit yeah. okay absolutely all the fabric items and the glue oh. to, to for gluing the fabric and on, the fabric tape and the tape is all included mm -hmm. Um, so, that, so the DR two-stroke, uh, the kit itself is about 27,000. The four-stroke is 27,800. The SJ two-stroke is 35,000, and the SJ four-stroke is about 35,500. And then to those, you, to each of those, you need to add the engines, propellers, uh, in, uh, instruments, and paint. <laughs> so uh, we have a website which is www.am planes p l a n e s dot com and we also have a youtube channel which is aeroplane manufactory and we have a facebook page which is also aeroplane manufactory and john posts updated little videos and news about what we're doing at the factory on those two uh, social media sites we do not do instagram we do not do twitter we don't do any of that stuff. oh come on you're not on tiktok <laughs> No, 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 no. I think the Schnuck is, but somebody else is doing it. Yeah. Okay. We're too old. We're too old to do that.